Hey everyone, what is going on? I hope you're having a great day. And today's the day that I think I'm finally gonna talk about it. It's been a bit overdue now, but today is the day I'm going to talk about the artist by Atreyu. So let's just dive right on in. The artist from Atreyu, it is their higher stack height, carbon plated racing shoe that they offer. It comes in at the sweet, sweet price of just $100. That being said, in order to get the shoe so far, you do have to be a subscriber to the base model, which comes in at $55 for each pair you get, and it's on a two month rotation. Okay, so before we break down my thoughts on the shoe and everything, I wanna go through all the stats really quickly with everyone. The upper of the shoe is the same exact upper used in the base model of Atreyu running shoes, same laces, same upper. The really only real difference here is the midsole. The midsole here is made up of a supercritical EVA foam, really just means it infuses carbon dioxide into the foam while they're making it, uh, which is supposed to make it a bit more springy and more bouncy. There is a full length carbon fiber plate through the midsole. The heel stack height comes in at 30 millimeters with the four foot stack height coming in at 24 millimeters, having a six millimeter heel to toe offset. Uh, which I believe is the same offset that the base model of Atreyu also has. Also though, the shoe does come, as you can kind of see here, with a inner sock liner, which is five millimeters, which adds five millimeters to both the heel and forefoot. So the drop is still the same, but the stack height is technically higher. Um, that being said, you know, the more miles you put in it, the more that sock liner is really gonna compress and you might lose a millimeter here or there. Not that big of a deal, really. It's a millimeter, it's very small. The outsole of the shoe is a one millimeter rubber outsole. Uh, it's very simple, no tread, just the outsole. Um, in terms of traction, it's pretty good. I've had no issues with it. I've run in some wet conditions and no issues. The weight of the shoe comes in at 7.8 ounces for a men's size nine or a women's 10 and a half. But ultimately, my final thoughts on the shoe, you know, if I had to give it a score out of 10, I'd probably give it like, I'd say a seven, maybe a 6.8 out of 10. You know, a good shoe, not a great shoe, not a bad shoe. Uh, it gets the job done. I'd say this, if you do subscribe to Atreyu and use the base model shoe, I think this is a great option if you want to get a carbon plated racer. It's only $100, so you're getting a very good deal compared to the other shoes, which are all the way up to $200, $250, $275. On the other hand, though, you know, if you don't subscribe to Atreyu, I don't think this shoe is worth getting a subscription just for this shoe specifically. Yes, there are other carbon plated racers out there that are you know, double the price, $200. But, you know, when you take into account, you know, the extra subscription stuff, I, I would think getting the other shoe is worth it. Whether it's your Asics Metaspeed Sky, Saucony Endorphin Pro, Nike Vaporfly, Nike Alpha Fly, whatever you so desire. So now that we have all the stats out of the way, I thought I would give some of my thoughts on each part of the shoe. Overall, I think it's a solid shoe. I have to say the upper, I really have no complaints about. It's just like the Atreyu base model upper. It's a relatively comfortable upper, somewhat breathable. Like there's nothing that jumps out to me that's really that bad. I do think the tongue of the shoe, and I believe I said this in my first impression uh, of the shoe, the tongue of the shoe, I believe, feels thinner than the Atreyu base model. Plus, you can see there's some holes in there, uh, kind of cutting some weight, um, not a lot, but you know, you cut weight where you need to. When you talk about the artist by Atreyu, you're really focusing here on the midsole. And what are my thoughts on the midsole? Overall, I would say the midsole is fine. I don't think at any point it jumped out to me. You know, it's not a, like, it's comfortable, but it's not like a super soft midsole. There are definitely softer shoes out there, 
when I put the shoe on, nothing really jumped out to me in a negative way, but nothing also really jumped out to me in a positive way. It was kind of like a okay shoe. I will say this though, the shoe did feel much softer in the heel, I'll kind of push there, than it did in the forefoot. And I think a, a negative that came from that was kind of, is I felt as if the shoe kind of encouraged heel striking a little bit more. Um, not that I think it really affected my strike too much, and I mean, the shoe geometry is built that way, you know, it's built with that rocker geometry that many of these racing shoes are built with to promote that roll of the foot, but I am more of a midfoot striker, and I felt that sometimes, you know, if I was getting tired, you know, I could hit my heel on the ground and it wouldn't, you know, jolt me awake or make me more aware just because the heel was much softer than the forefoot. Overall, my biggest gripe with this shoe is probably the weight. It comes in again at 7.8 ounces for a men's size 9. And while that's not terrible, um, a lot of other carbon plated racing shoes come in around the mid 7 ounce range. I was expecting more. Um, this shoe, a prototype was sent out to a lot of people about a year ago now actually and a lot of them were saying how light it was and you know they were talking you know in some cases under six ounces for their size and i you know was kind of expecting that when i got the shoe so i was a bit disappointed to see when i had the shoe and when i saw the final product online that it was going to be as heavy as it is it's not a heavy shoe but it was just heavier than what i expected and so my expectations just weren't met. So I'll come out here and I'll just give my final thoughts on the shoe. When I really started running in the shoe, the shoe that I kept comparing it to over and over again was actually not the Endorphin Pro, but the Saucony Endorphin Speed. I think part of that was the weight, but also the feel of the shoe. You know, it didn't feel as aggressive as the Saucony Endorphin Pro or some other carbon plated racing shoes. And it felt similar on my foot to the Endorphin Speed in terms of just like the feel as you go through the stride and the rigidity of it, you know. I mean, it is definitely more rigid than the Endorphin Speed, but in general, it felt very similar to that to me. The main difference between this and the Endorphin Speed was the Endorphin Speed felt a little softer underfoot. And also, even though they come in at the same weight, I believe both of them are around 7.8 ounces, the Endorphin Speed for some reason felt just like lighter. And I'm not exactly sure why, you know, I mean they're the same weight so I don't know why. I think part of the reason could be in the Endorphin Speed there are some holes in the upper so you get more of a breeze through the foot which may just psychologically make it feel lighter, um, which you don't get in this case. but. I can't say for sure. I can say it reminded me a lot of the Endorphin Speed, and you know, who knows, maybe I'll have to do a comparison between the two. My last thought about this shoe actually is how I think Atreyu could improve it. I think with the foam they used, the, the super critical EVA foam, I think what they should do is it is a bit more dense. Um, there's actually a video online somewhere with Saucony where they compare just EVA foam to the Piba foam, which is what they use in their Endorphin Speed and Endorphin Pro shoes. They have a little ball, just like two balls, one EVA, one Piba, uh, and they drop them on the ground and the EVA bounces probably halfway back up and the Piba one bounces probably three quarters, 80% of the way back up, showing that Piba has a much higher energy return than EVA. Now I know this is super critical EVA, so it's a bit you know fancier, a bit better than normal EVA, but it is denser and there's less energy return compared to a Piba foam. What I think they should do is trim down the stack height of the shoe because that will solve a big issue of the weight and it will get the weight down. And it could appeal to the market of people who aren't necessarily interested in these super high stack height shoes. You know, everyone is coming out with their high stack height carbon plated shoes. You got the Vaporfly, the Endorphin Pro, the Metaspeed, the Hyperion Elite, Adidas has theirs. And I think if they were to slim it down, it would kind of give a medium option where you could still get the carbon plate so you still get that rigidity, but you maybe get a bit more ground contact feel with the lower stack height. Uh, I'm thinking something along the lines of the rumored Nike Streakfly, which is supposed to be a smaller stack height carbon plated shoe. 
for shorter half marathon 10k and so on you know i think if you can kind of cut the stack height down uh you'll cut the weight i don't think it would really affect the feel of the shoe that much and i think you might walk away with actually a better shoe but those are my thoughts on the artist by atreyu let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below make sure you leave a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching i will see you all next time Thank you.